Hello and welcome to David the Teacher. Today we are discussing the basics of learning the language. And when I say the basics, I mean something that you need at the very beginning of the process. For example, how can I plan the process to be successful at the end? Or how can I improve my speaking skills and increase my vocabulary? Or is it possible to learn the language without any textbooks? I'm going to cover all of these questions and please get ready, take some notes and we are starting now. First of all, I would like to tell you that you should be a disciplined person to learn the language. And when I say disciplined, I don't mean the same thing that The Rock Johnson is talking about, okay? It's not about hitting the gym or waking up early in the morning, no, but it is about the time. The time that you are ready to spend on it, I mean the process of learning the language. You know, it's not your mother tongue and it requires some time and effort. So, there is the next question. How much time should I spend on it to learn the language? All right, so just right there, you should note three aspects. The first one, what is your level? The second one, which level you would like to reach? And the third one is time limits, okay? For example, your level is A1, you would like to reach B1, in three months of course in this case um, it will take much more time but if we talk about a person that tries to learn the language and it's kind of his or her hobby in this case 10 hours a week is enough and it's a very good strategy all right i hope it's clear with the discipline and discipline mainly means the time and effort that you can devote to this process. All right, so now let's move on to our next step, which is a plan. And the first step of your plan should be checking your own level. If you don't know your level, you will take some easy materials and as a result of what you will be bored, or you can take very hard materials and end up overwhelmed, okay? And to avoid that kind of situation, you should check your own level, right? So, but how can you do this? How can you check the real level? Of course, uh, there are some online tests and offline tests. You can take them. And uh, also, there is a PDF file in the description of this video. You can download it. This is a PDF file with a description of ESL standards by level. That file will help you to find out information on what grammar topics are for your level, how you can write and what you can understand at each level. So download it, use it and let me tell you that almost all of my colleagues use that type of files when we set up a new program for our students. So I hope it's going to be helpful for you. As I told you, checking your level is one of the parts of a plan, but that's not all. The second step that you should take, in my opinion, is setting a realistic goal. Okay? Unfortunately, a lot of students, they make this mistake. They think that by setting an overambitious goal, and when I say overambitious, for example, the student's English level is A1, and he thinks or she thinks that, uh, it's possible to reach the level C1 in one or two months. Unfortunately, it's not possible. Even if you work hard, learn a lot and spend something like 10, 12 hours a day, you will just burn yourself out. So because of that, I say, please, Set a realistic goal, because if your goal is realistic, even if you spend something like 7 or 10 hours a week, you will reach the progress, because it's enough, right? So you will not feel that you are overloaded by the materials, or it's a boring process. So please, stick to this strategy, because 7 or 10 hours a week is actually a great idea, and at the end, you will learn the language. Let's go to the next part of our plan, and I call this part proper material. When I say proper material, I mean something that you need to learn the language. And I always notice 
two divisions of people. The first likes textbooks. They adore them and it's definitely going to be a part of their program. The second hates textbooks. There is the question, can I learn the language without any textbooks? So let me tell you that I was a representative of the second division, okay? And I actually didn't like textbooks. I wanted to learn the language and have fun, okay? Of course, I spent a lot of time and put a lot of effort into this process, but I learned it uh, mainly by watching BBC, CNN and some YouTube videos. That's it. So how can I choose a proper textbook for myself if I want to start learning the language? This is also a very important question, but this question has a lot of answers because every student is an individual, okay? All of them have their own preferences and what you can do to avoid the failure at the end. So the first thing that you should do is to read the description of the book, okay? If you read the description of it, it means that you know what is the book's, what is the textbook's focus, okay? I mean, maybe the author focused mainly on speaking, maybe on writing, maybe on reading or grammar. And I want you to note that if you are at the beginning of the process and you have just started learning the language, the best option for you is a book that focuses on all of those skills plus pronunciation, grammar and vocabulary. But in the future, if you want to improve any specific skill, yeah, you can find a book that focuses on that concrete skill. So now let's talk a little bit about the content of the book. You can find it on the first pages of it. Try to find some topics that you are interested in. But if the book comprises some contents that you are not interested in, so yeah, I think you should change the book. Now I'm sharing with you some information that is usually avoided by some students, unfortunately, and it is actually a very important part of learning the language. This is about four skills, listening, reading, speaking, writing, plus grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation. Unfortunately, a lot of students are trying to focus on mainly two of them, listening and speaking. But I, as an ESL instructor, suggest you to focus on all of them, okay? speaking, reading, listening, writing, pronunciation, vocabulary, and the grammar. There are some combinations that I usually use when I teach my students. For example, reading with writing, listening with speaking. And of course, I teach new vocabulary every lesson, try to give some exercises to improve their pronunciation, and sometimes give some grammar topics. And I hope this advice is going to be helpful and you will set up a program for yourself based on this advice and you will learn the language at the end, okay? So we talked about the plan and I hope that my advices will be useful for you to plan your own program, okay? So now let's move to the next part of this video and in this part I am going to answer some frequently asked questions, okay? So, the first question is, of course, how can I improve my speaking skills? Let me tell you beforehand that it's a very huge topic to be discussed in a, such a short video. So, please let me know in the comment section below if you want me to make a video about improving your speaking skills, right? Now, let me give you some advices to improve your speaking skills. And the first thing is visiting any English speaking country. So if you have that kind of opportunity to visit, I don't know, the UK, the US or Australia, etc., etc., please grasp it and try to be active person there. For example, try to book a table in a restaurant, book a hotel room or go somewhere. Just try to talk to people and make friends. So at the end, you will feel that time spent in English speaking country considerably boosted your English level. So yes, if you have this opportunity, just do it. So the second thing that can help you to improve your English speaking skills is 
making English speaking friends. Okay, so let me tell you that if you want to improve your speaking skills, of course, you should just speak, just practice, practice everything that you learned, and you need a person. And because of that, the best person is going to be a native speaker. All right. If you don't have any opportunity of visiting any English speaking country or it's very hard for you to make English speaking friends so the next method is gonna be your favorite because all you need is a device where you can watch videos and yourself that's it so I call this method listen and repeat that easy so you listen and you repeat but the most important part of this process is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means when you change some words in a sentence, but you keep the idea. Or also you can add your own ideas to these sentences. For example, you are watching a video and the speaker there says, I should go home. Okay, I should go home. And you repeat after the speaker, but you paraphrase his words. For example, he should go home. He should go home. Or you just add your own ideas. He should go home because it's late. He should go home because it's late. That's easy. So use it because it's easy and effective. Although listen and repeat is a great way to improve your speaking skills, it sometimes doesn't work for students with weak listening skills at the beginning of the process. And because of that, I introduce you, drum roll please, this method. It's a great way for improving your speaking skills as well as working on the new vocabulary that you learn to turn it into something habitual for you. For example, your new word is prefer, but you still don't know how to use it in your sentences. You still use choose, like, love, and so on. So, you should create new sentences using the word prefer in them. For example, I prefer walking with my friends. I prefer eating chocolate. I prefer sleeping at night it's obvious but anyway yes and the next time when you repeat the word prefer please try to be more creative and use it in new sentences don't try to repeat the same sentences that you have already created okay I heard about the next method something like three or four years ago from one of my students and he told me that it's a great way to improve your speaking skills. Uh, the method is easy, it's talking to Siri, okay? Talking to Siri, that's it. Of course, I'm not telling you to talk to it about policy, economy or your life because unfortunately Siri is not able to keep the conversation going. Use some fixed expressions or simple sentences like can you find for me that photo or can you call that person that kind of sentences and let's move to the last method for today to improve your speaking skills and this is the method that I usually suggest my beginner students okay beginner students so the method is easy you should just comment your own actions commenting your own actions for example you enter the bathroom and you do this I wash my hair I wash my hair then you do this I wash my hands I wash my hands please use it because it's actually a great way to learn how to describe things that you do on a daily basis. Now, let's move to the next frequently asked question and this is, how can I enhance my vocabulary? It's a great question and before starting the process, you should know one thing, that learning 10-15 words a day is actually a great idea. Because at the end of the week, you're gonna learn something like 70 to 105 words. 
and as an ESL instructor I can say that it's a great weekly progress. Of course, if you want you can learn more words, something like 50, 60 words a day, but it requires a lot of time and effort because learning new vocabulary is mainly about remembering these words and to remember we should repeat a lot and it will take a lot of time. If you can spend that amount of time on this process, yeah, why not? Just do it. Also, let me know that one of the reasons why we learn new vocabulary is to make our speech look more developed. It's logical, isn't it? But sometimes some students make a mistake at the beginning of the process when they start learning new vocabulary, which influence the result. And the result point is using new vocabulary. The thing is, students don't know how to use these words. They see it in a text, they understand the meaning, but in a speech, unfortunately, they can't use it. For example, the word prefer, okay? And they think prefer to, prefer in, prefer on, about, over, okay? So they don't know which preposition should be used with the word prefer. And because of that, please learn new words with prepositions. Or you can also learn collocations, all right? The next thing that beginner students usually tend to do is learning words that they don't need at that level. Maybe they don't fully understand the meaning of these words. Maybe they don't know how to use them in their speech. Or they don't know how to connect these words to other words. But anyway, try to learn words that you can use in your speech. I also would like to mention that some students are wondering, is it possible to learn how to speak and write properly, ignoring grammar? Yes, it's possible. But let me tell you that if you don't speak the language that you learn constantly and you are not fully surrounded with it, this process will be very difficult for you to learn the grammar like natives do, I mean naturally. So it will take a huge amount of time to speak and write accurately. And when I say accurately, I mean, for example, you look at the house and instead of saying, it's a beautiful house, you say, those to be beautiful house. Okay, I got the idea, but the sentence itself is not correct because it is not accurate. I also want you to know that grammar rules have been created to ease the process of learning. And if you find it very difficult or impossible, then it means that you should change something in your strategy or you should just totally change it. I suggest you to learn the grammar in a fun way. There are a lot of materials on the internet, just Google it and you will find something that will turn this process into something joyful. So this is the end of the video and in this video I talked about several things like how can I plan the process of learning, how can I choose a proper material and what kind of goal should I have. I also answered some frequently asked questions like how can I improve my speaking skills and increase my vocabulary and can I ignore the grammar? I hope that you liked the video and it was helpful. If so, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and press the bell button. And of course, I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye bye.